Good morning, Miss Vicky. Good morning. Hey, beautiful. I see y'all been doing video chats. Hopefully I can get in. Y'all know I go to bed early. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, look. Anything after nine o'clock? Mm -mm. Good morning. Hey, Michelle. Good morning. Hey, DeShannon. See y'all coming in. Good morning. Good morning. You can. wonder when you're doing certain stuff what God is saying <laughs> like I'm sure sometimes he's been with me like Decided I just don't want anything in his way. No relationship, no circumstance, no situation, nothing. I want nothing in his way, nothing. Move that over. You can 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 move that over. Will make room. Good morning, good morning, beautiful. Hey, Jay. You can move that over. Help me move it over. I mean, if you ask that, I promise you, he'll help you move whatever it is in your in in his way. He'll help you get it out the way. If you'll be honest and you'll be sincere and you'll be like, you know what, Lord, I need you to help me move this over. I don't want anything else before you. Mm. My God, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> move my pride over. Um, move, move whatever it is that I desire over you. Move, like move, move it, move it, move it. Yeah, so that you become number one. I think for sure that is why I know Paul said what he said when he was in the Word. And he was like, look, if you can be single, be single. And if you can't be single, um, then get married. But I'm just going to be honest with you. When you get married, the person that you're married to, you're going to desire them more than anything else. 
And we skate over that scripture a lot. Like we don't spend a lot of time looking at what Paul is saying there. He's like, look, and I think it's forewarning even for those of us that will get married and those of us that are married, Paul is simply saying, you, 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 you've got to fight. Like you've got to fight the temptation of your wanting or desiring your spouse over God. Like it's got to be big. And so relationships for me are probably the things that interfere with our relationship with God more than anything, right? Like a relationship, it's always a, a relationship between um, us and our our spouses or a relationship with our children or a relationship with our parents, that those relationships are the relationships that tend to interfere more than anything with our relationship with God. And so Paul, I was meditating on that and thinking about that scripture this morning. If Paul said to us, look, if you don't have to get married, don't get married. Like, don't get married. Like, make the decision and don't get married. But if you're going to get, if you can be steadfast in your singleness, if you can not be given over to lust, then don't get married. Stay by yourself, right? Because if not, if you do get married, this is what's going to happen. You're going to desire your marriage more than you desire me. So in my singleness, I chew on that, right? I chew I chew on that because, and then I think we didn't chew on that enough to get into it and study it enough and be like, you know what? If I'm married, I have to make sure that my marriage, right? Um, I have to, you, I have to make sure that my marriage does not supersede my relationship with God. It's got to be a priority. I got to make sure I'm putting the things into my marriage. I got to make sure I'm sewing into my marriage. I got to make sure I love. But I, at no time can this marriage supersede my relationship with God. And that goes for your career. And that goes for anything else. Any desire that you have that would fight to take the place of God. We have to be careful. We have to be careful that those things are not in interfering or in in the way yeah t it is it's in it's paul talks about it he's like if you get married you're gonna get married and you're gonna start desiring your spouse over and so many of us who aspire to be married or other things those things are so, so easy or we aspire for greater careers right or we aspire for all these different things those desires and it's not necessarily that it's not that God didn't put those desires or that God didn't call you to it it's just that have i made that desire greater than God and so when we listen to John, Jonathan McReynolds song make room he's saying anything that i have that's interfering with the relationship with God anything whatsoever that's going to interfere with it is um a problem my oldest son is in my house so he just peeked i want y'all to think i got some strange man in my house oh um, he just peeked behind are you dressed no but mommy, there's an ambulance outside. okay so so we got to make sure that we make we make we we got to make sure that without a doubt that we are in a position and in a place um where nothing like where nothing is superseding, nothing is overwhelming, nothing is taking the precedent of God. He said, there's an ambulance outside my house. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we we, can, we cancel every attack, every sat satanic plot and ploy against my neighbors. We thank you, Father God, that health is their reasonable portion. And we stand in faith for that. We cover them in the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. We thank you, Father God, that your healing virtue is in every tissue, every fiber, and every cell in their body aligns with the word of God. We thank you, Lord God, and we lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. Okay, I had to do that. Anytime I see an ambulance or a wreck or whatever, I stay um, in faith and I just begin to pray for them in the name of Jesus. So he was telling me there was an ambulance outside. So we were just talking about anything that would be in the place of God, anything that would, um, anything that would, um take place of God and the song move that over and so we just have to make sure that nothing is taking the place of God so we're going to um thank you thank you thank you
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is why it is so important for us to cover our neighborhoods, that we cover our neighborhoods. For those of you that have been on the devotional, we've been interceding for our neighborhoods. And so it is important for you to intercede for your neighbor. Whether you know whether they believe or not, the prayers of the righteous avail as much. So we thank you, Father God, that the blood still works. Um, so we're, we're closing out Ecclesiastes today. We're going to close this scripture out today. Um, thank you for those of you that joined ladies Bible study last night. If you are not in our special group, if you are not in our special group, if you've not seen Bible study last night, I'm just going to tell you to go chew on it. Um, it was just, it was something else. It was something else. Like it was something else. Like it was a lot to digest, but it was necessary. So if you're not in that special group on Facebook, it's Coffee and Conversations, Ladies Bible Study. Get permission to join the group. And we would love to, to see there. All the videos stay up so you can go back. Last night was necessary, but ooh child, ooh child. Poor child. It was a little bit overwhelming, but it was necessary. We had such a good time. Like we had a, such a good time. You would have swore we were all in the same room. We had such a good time. So we're finishing up this scripture today and I'm going to pray and we're going to take our Psalms 91, but we're going to take our Psalms 91 at the end. We're going to finish up the word today. We're going to finish up this scripture. Somebody said they still bleeding. We know we need you to get a band-aid. We don't need no band-aid. We need you going to let that healing take place. We're going to finish up this scripture. We're going to talk about our vows. We're going to talk about where we are. Um, we're going to chew on the end of this word today. And then we're going to make a transition into Romans this week. So get yourself prepared for Romans. And we're going to close out Ecclesiastes 5. It is amazing that this first, this one through seven verse has invoked so much with the Holy Spirit. Like this first through seven verse has just invoked, has just transitioned, has just tra translated to so much, has given us so much revelation. I'm like, how can just seven little verses give us just so much? But remember, when we started studying Ecclesiastes, I told you that Solomon had gotten to a place where he realized that nothing but God mattered. That's that's what the point of Ecclesiastes. See, people always look for Proverbs to just be the wisdom from God. But Ecclesiastes is also the wisdom from God. And so Saul is at this place where he's like, I mean, Solomon is at this place where he's had multiple women. He has had multiple wives, his career. He's had fame. He's had fortune. He's ruled this kingdom. He's experienced all these things. And he comes to the end of himself. And when he writes Ecclesiastes, he's like, none of that mattered. Like none of that mattered more than God, right? None of that mattered more than God. And so when he's writing to us, he's just talking to us about seasons and times and understanding that your beginning and your end is with God. Understanding that your beginning and your end is with God. And so it's so much to chew on in Ecclesiastes. So we started this chapter. I'm getting ready to bless our food. I'm getting ready to bless the word. We'll take our Psalms 91 at the end. I'm going to bless the word. And if you're needing healing, if you're in need of healing, make sure you share that with us so that we can pray for you. I'm going to bless the word. I'm going to bless the food. I'm going to bless the words that come out of my mouth. And then we're going to close this out today. Father God, I thank you for the food that we're about to receive. Lord God, let it be nourished into our bodies. Give us revelation knowledge, Lord God. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Daddy God, so that we may hear you, so that we may understand you, so that we may walk in your promises for the promises of God. Are yes. Amen. We plead the blood of Jesus over this day, over our mind, over our spirit, over our soul, over our body. And we thank you, Father God, today that we are anchored in the truth. My God, thank you for revelation knowledge, Lord God. Thank you for wisdom that passes all understanding. Thank you, Father God, that we are anchored in your truth and that we will not believe another lie that comes from the devil. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the God that rescues us, that you are the God that loved us, that you are the God that formed us in our mother's womb. We thank you, Father God, for an electrifying testimony that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is Lord over Lakeisha's home and 
He is Lord over Javen, Jaleel, Jermaine, Josiah, and Judah, and Lyric, Logan, Shiloh, Zayden, and Casey. He is Lord over Vanessa. He is Lord over Jerrica. He is Lord over all, every last person over this. He is Lord over Little Rock. He is Lord over Arkansas. He is Lord over the United States of America. He is Lord over the North American continent. He is Lord over this entire world. So we thank you, Father God, for being the Lord above, the one true God, my God, the one true God, the one true God, supreme ruler of this universe, Daddy God. We just thank you. We thank you. We thank you for our righteousness, Lord God. We thank you for we are right standing. We are justified. We thank you. We are chosen. We are adopted. We are loved. We thank you, Lord God. We are anchored in your truth, Lord God, and we will not believe another lie. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, stir up the gift in us. Stir up, stir up, stir up, stir up, stir up. Don't fa We're going to fan the flame this morning. We're not going to let it die. We thank you for calling us fully into our purpose and that we understand we have clearer eyes. We see Father God, you said those that have ears, let them hear you. We thank you, Lord God, that we can hear you. We sabotage every plan of the enemy. We bind every principality, every satanic attack, plot and ploy back to the pits of hell from which it came. And we thank you that you rescue us, Jesus, that you rescue us from coronavirus, that you rescue us from all manner, from cancer, from diabetes, Lord God, from high blood pressure, that you have rescued us, that you have delivered us from all manner of sickness and disease. We thank you, Father God, that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And when we don't know what to pray, that you pray with us, through us, and for us, Holy Spirit. We thank you. Our righteousness, Father God, is settled, Father God, in the fact that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose on the third day with not limited power but all power in his hands and we thank you father god that justice is being served today on our behalf father our loyalty is you to you we thank you for jesus we thank you for jesus we thank you for jesus we thank you father god we thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you we bind every satanic tack and a plot plot employee that's been coming in our mind and we take our rest in the name of jesus Jesus, anxiety must go and worry must go and doubt must go and fear must go, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. Today we abide in your truth and in your love, my God, that we abide in your truth in your love. My God, I expect to see answers today. I expect to see miracles today. I expect to see signs today. I expect to see wonders today, Lord God, because Jesus is our only truth. We position ourselves at your feet today, Lord God. And we trust you to be the one true king. We trust you to be the one true king that you won't give us any bad advice, that you're not going to lead us into darkness. As a matter of fact, you're going to lead us into light, Lord God. We thank you that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not want, and you're leading us by streams of waters and into green pastures, Lord God. Thank you for restoring our soul. My God, Jesus, we thank you that you are the high priest. My God, you are the high priest. You are the high priest, and with you on the throne, there is nothing that can overwhelm us. There is nothing that can overtake us. There is nothing that can defeat us, and our power and our rest and our love, we trust you, oh Lord. We trust you. We trust you. You said just the faith of a mustard seed, just a tiny, just a little bit of faith, Father God, and we can move mountains. So we speak to the mountain of debt. And we speak to the mountain of poverty and we speak to the mountain of sickness and we speak to the mountain of disease and we cast you into the sea. We cast you and we speak to all the bad memories and we cast you into the sea of forgetfulness. My God, we thank you, Lord God. We are anchored in your truth today. We are bought with a high price. The blood was the ex ultimate sacrifice. And so we are redeemed and set free. We thank you for the final authority in Christ Jesus. Now let the words of my mouth, my God, the meditation of my heart, my God, my God, my God, my be acceptable in your sight. 
You are our strength. You are my redeemer. You are my truth. You are my beginning. You are my end. You are my way maker. My God, you are Prince of Peace. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are the great I am. You are El Shaddai. My God, my God, my God, you have not forsaken me. You have not forgotten about me. My God, your angels are encamped around my home and in my neighborhood and in my city and in my state and in my world, in the White House, Lord God, and in the governor's mansion and in Frank Scott's home, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that your angels of protection are around us. They are encamped around us. They are encamped in the hospital. They are encamped in every city, state, nation, and world. There is no force like your angels, Lord God. We thank you. We are established in the fact of our redemption, our sanctification, and that we are protected, Lord God. We honor you with the fruit of our lips, Lord God. We bless your holy name this day. We magnify you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord. We lift up the name to Jesus. We lift up the name of Jesus. My God, we thank you. We bless 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 you. Glory to God. 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 My God, I thank you. I bless you. I praise you. You you are so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are so wonderful. Thank you. My God. 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 I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I bless you. I praise you. I magnify you. I lift up the name of Jesus. You are my strong tower, my reasonable portion. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us daily bread and loading us with our daily benefits. I thank you, Father God, for blessing us. I thank you that whatever is in your kingdom, whatever it is, your kingdom, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you for your will being done in our lives in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you. I am always so grateful to just God and who and what he is. And I told y'all I've been smiling like incessantly for the last two or three days, like a smile that just will not go away. And I feel the power of God and I feel the strength of God. And I am just amazed by his grace and his love for us and i know that daddy god is on the scene and he is on the throne and there is nothing too big for him that he can't handle and so if you will submit your crisis to him because we've all been in a crisis situation we've all been in circumstances and situations that we've been overwhelmed with if you will just submit your crisis to him today you know what lord i have no authority over this situation my god i don't have the capacity to make this happen only you do so you know what i'm getting ready to cast my cares on you you might have to write it out you might have to throw it on a piece, piece of paper i'm getting ready to lay this at your feet today. I'm going to lay my finances at your feet. I'm going to lay my marriage at your feet. I'm going to lay my children at your feet. I'm going to lay my barrenness, whatever your situation is at my feet. I'm going to lay my ministry. I'm going to lay my business. I'm going to lay my broken heart before you. Some of you have suffered from broken hearts. I'm going to lay my broken heart before you. I'm going to lay, I'm going to lay this at your feet because there's absolutely nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I can do. And I'm not going to waste any more time worrying over it. I can't, I can't spend any more time being consumed. I can't spend any more time being overwhelmed. I can't, I can't, I can't spend any more time on it. I'm going to lay everything at your feet this morning. I'm going to lay it down at the altar. I'm going to cast my cares on you because you care for me and you know how this circumstance is going to end and you know how this situation is. So daddy God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you with my deepest pain. I'm going to trust you with this situation. I don't understand. I'm going to trust you when it doesn't make sense. I'm going to trust you with the prayers that have not been answered yet. I'm going to trust you this morning. And when I make it, because when I make this decision to trust you, it's going to cancel Satan, Satan against my mind. So when it comes up again, you're st- simply going to be able to tell, say, no, no, I'm not getting ready to worry on this. I've already trusted God th- with this situation. Financially, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm a tither. I'm a covenant person. So I ain't got nothing to worry about anyway. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust in your word, what your word says. I'm going to allow your word to redeem me and set me free for such a time as this that you show yourself 
strong in my life in Jesus name. Amen. Like I'm going to give it all to you. Yeah. Lay it all before him this morning. Just write. You might have to write it out when we, when we shut down. Remember, we've been practicing the presence of God. You may have to write it out. You may have to write whatever this is you've been struggling with for so long and say, you know what, daddy, I'm giving this to you today. I have a, I have, I told you I have a journal. I thought I had it with me. I have a something for Jesus to do journal. I have a book where I write things in. My aunt told me a long time ago, she said, you create you a something for Jesus to do box, a something for Jesus to do journal. And when you put it in this box or you put it in this book, when the enemy comes back and tries to bring it up, you said, nah, I gave this to Jesus. I'm not dealing with this. This is under the blood. And every time I've done that, I've taken the stress and the pressure off myself. I've relieved myself from being my own God. Like I've relieved myself from being my own God. I don't have to be my own God. I don't have to think negative thoughts all day long. I don't have to be consumed with worry all day long. As a matter of fact, the word tells me, think on what's pure, what's noble, what's lovely, and what's good report. That's, that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose to be happy today. I'm going to choose, choose to find my joy and strength. And even as an, even, even if it's all worked out, I'm going to choose to trust God with my circumstances and my situations more than I trust myself. Because if I keep trying to be my own deliverer, that was a word for somebody right there. If I keep trying to be my own deliverer, we're going back to Egypt. We we going back to Egypt. If I keep trying to deliver myself, we're gonna go back to Egypt. We're gonna be back in Egypt. We're gonna be back under Pharaoh's rule. We're gonna be at back in a place that seems safe but ain't even fruitful. We're gonna be back in a place that seems 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 fruitful. Seems 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 it seems seems right. Seems safe, but it ain't even fruitful. It ain't even fruitful. So if I'm if I'm my own God today. If I'm my own God, if I'm continuing to, to be my own God, then I'm going to be back in a place that seems, seems okay, seems safe, but it ain't even fruitful. It's not going to bear any fruit. And so we got to make that decision today. Will you make that decision today? Will you say, you know what? I'm getting ready to cast all my cares. I'm going to lay all of this at your feet because I ain't trying to go back to Egypt. But that's what happens when we become our own God, right? We ask for, we look for other gods to lord over us. We look for other things to protect and provide for us. And those things don't even have validity they will not last only what you do for God will last and only God will last because he is the beginning and the end my God he, the alpha and the mega okay come on he starts this thing and he's gonna end it he starts this thing and he's gonna end it and you gotta know he's got he's going to end it he's going to end it he's gonna end your pain he's gonna end your suffering He's going to do that. He's going to do that. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the just God. That's the fair God. That's the loving God. That's the powerful God. That's the all-knowing God. That's the all-seeing God. That's that's the type of God. That's the God that formed you in your mother's womb. That's the God that said, I know, Frida, the plan that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Come on now. Plan, plans to prosper you. I didn't call you to be sick. I didn't call you to this place. I know the plans that I have for you, right? Right? Um, I'm, I know the plans I have. That's the God. He's the, he's a finisher. He's a finisher. God is a finisher. He's a finisher. You just got to press. You just got to press on. I, this is a word for somebody today. I wasn't even going into this direction. I still got a little bit to teach you. You just got to press on in. You just got to press on in. You're going to press in on praise. You're going to press in on praise. You're going to turn around and you're going to press in on praise. And you're going to press in and worship. And you're going to trust this word today. And this word is going to supersede anything that you ever imagine why because the word is the truth it is the infallible word of god this is the heart of god and we're gonna chew this we're gonna eat this and we're gonna laugh we're gonna live in this in jesus name amen my god i thank you 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 and justice is served and justice is served and it's served in your favor my god we don't serve a high priest that's dead we serve a high priest that's living that's acting that's the one true god you gotta know that you serve the one true the living god my god and there shall be no other god before him right we're not gonna celebrate we're not gonna let ourselves there shall be no other god before him in jesus name amen my god what a word what some what what a word what something to chew on for you to chew on this morning my god this is the god this is the lover of my soul he's equipped me for every 
circumstance and situation and I just got to trust it to him I just gotta trust it to him I gotta know that he is God alone and he don't need my help <laughs> he doesn't need Lakeisha's help whatsoever he, he doesn't need it he doesn't need me to be doing absolutely anything for him that's not what he needs me to do he needs me to set on down somewhere and rest in his promises and rest in truth he's already led me by the streams of water and so he's simply saying to me drink up Drink up, drink up. And we've learned that we cannot drink and talk at the same time. So, Lord God, we just thank you right now for quenching our thirst. We thank you for the living water. We receive the living water. Holy Spirit, fill us up in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy Spirit, fill us up, fill us up, fill our cups up till we overflow. Father God, fill our cup up till we overflow in Jesus' name. Amen. My God, I magnify you. I thank you. I bless you. I praise you. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. You are the one true king. You are the one true king in Jesus name. Amen. So, who that was good. That was good. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I thank you, Lord God, for an encouraging word. That was good. Come on now. That was good. That was good. That fortified my soul. That strengthened something inside me. My God, I cannot... I, I'm just telling you, I could talk about Jesus all day. I could talk about Jesus and his goodness all day long. Yeah, ask him to breathe on you. Ask him to rain on you. Ask him to wet you up. Ask him to liberally supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. It's not based on your riches and glory. Say, Lord, supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. His riches and glory are unlimited. It is not. that Your daddy guy got a black card. He got a card that doesn't expire. He has a card that doesn't have have to be renewed. He has a card that has no limits. Ask him, Lord God, supply all my needs. And that's not just financially. If you lonely, Lord God, supply all my needs. If you need friendship, Lord God, supply all my needs. If you need a man, Lord God, supply all my needs. You supply them because if I, if you supply them, then it's going to be everlasting. Come on now. If you supply them, it's not self-sustaining. You're going to sustain this. You need a new career, a new, you need to understand, but Lord God, supply all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. My God, I thank you. My God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We rest in that promise today. We rest in that promise today. We rest in that promise today. So let me give you the last nuggets of this, right? Let me let me give you the last nuggets of this so we can close this chapter, so we can get into the power that's going to come from us in Romans 5. I'm just, I don't know, my God. Thank you. I feel daddy God. I see the sovereignness of God. I'm telling you, he is on the scene. Do not trust your eyes for they will deceive you. Don't trust your eyes. Ask the Lord, give me ears to hear. Let me see what's happening with my spiritual eyes. Don't keep reporting all the bad news. Trust what daddy God is saying to you in this season. So let's close this chapter out. Y'all ready? My God, let's close this chapter out. So we are talking about approaching God with care. And this is chapter five in Ecclesiastes, right? So get your pen and pencil. Let's take these final notes. And it says, as you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are here on earth. So let your words be few. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words makes you a fool. When you make a promise to God, when you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Don't let your mouth make you sin. And don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake. That would make God angry. And he might wipe out everything you have achieved. Talk is cheap, like daydreams and other useless activities. I want to read this in the Amplified. And then I'm going to just give you my nuggets that the Lord has revealed to me about this so that we can chew on this. Let's see what the Amplified version. Remember, the Amplified captures the meaning of the original Greek and Hebrew. I love the Amplified. So it says, guard your steps and focus on what you are doing as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the careless or irreverent sacrifice of fools, for they are too ignorant to know they are doing evil. 
Do not be hasty with your mouth, speaking careless words or vows, or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter before God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For the dream comes through much effort and the voice of the fool through many words. When you make a vow or pledge to God, do not put off paying it. For God takes no pleasure in fools who thoughtlessly mock him. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin and do not say before the messenger of God that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry because of your voice, words, and destroy the work of your hands? For in a multitude of dreams and in a flood of words, there is worthlessness. Rather reverently fear God and worship him with all filled respect, knowing who he is. So if you've been on the devotional, right? You, you, if, you've, if you've been on the devotional or if you've not been on the devotional, we've been talking about we are supposed to say very few words before God. When we go before God, how are we supposed to go before God? We go before God. Remember Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says we go before God empty. We go before God humble and we go before God and being obedient, being obedient to what he says. And so I want to give you this last piece on what the Bible says about vows, making vows, because this is very important because we will make oaths and vows before God and not honor them and, and not think they're any big deal. But in actuality, the scripture tells us when we make oaths or vows before God, um, if you don't know if you're going to be able to keep your word, um, you, it is a sin. It's a sin to make an oath, a promise, a vow. It's a sin to make an if then statement to God. It's a sin to say to God, if you get me out of this, then I'll do this, <laughs> right? The, I'm just saying, you got to understand the character of God. You got to understand the nature of God. That's why we've been praying the names and looking at the attributes of God. You got to understand the nature and the character of God. I don't, I, we don't really understand that God still judges. Like we got to understand the nature and the character. And so it is better that we don't make vows to God, right? You don't know if you're going to be able to keep your word and you might get selfish, right? And so, well, God, if you help me, if you bless me, I'm going to give 10% of my money to the poor. And then God blesses us and we don't give 10% of the money to the poor, right? Or God, if you bless me with this woman, I'm going to take care of her and love her with all my heart. And then I get her and I don't love her with all my heart, right? Um, God, 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 if you give me this job, if you give me this job, if you bless me with this job, Father, I promise to tithe. I promise to serve you all the days of my life. I will never let this job interfere with you. Lord, if you give me a husband, you bless me with this husband. My marriage is going to honor you. Like those are vows. Those are vows. You do this. And so if you, God, if you do this, I'll go and witness to people throughout the world. I'm going to go witness. I'm going to be a witness. I'm, I'm going to be a witness. Lord, I'm going to dedicate my life to you. I'm going to be sovereign. That's why, that's why the word tells you to count the cost before you say something. Like to count the cost before you say something. Count the cost before you make a decision. Count the cost before you build the building. Count the cost before you ask for the marriage. Count the cost before you ask for the children. Count the cost before you ask for the business. That is why the word comes without a doubt and says, no, you need to add up the cost before you ask for this. You need to add up the cost. And so we are not to go and make vows. You can't compromise with God. God is a God and he will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. So you can't compromise. There, that, that you cannot, you cannot make God a promise and not come cash in on what you promised him. You cannot tell him, Lord, I'm giving you my life. I surrender my life. I'm going to serve you all the days of my life, and then not serve him. That that is not how this God we we live with this God. You got to get familiar with His character to understand that He is looking for every word that comes out of your mouth. Matthew tells us Jesus said on the final days. By your words, you're going to be acquitted. And by your words, you're going to be condemned. Whatever words you use are either going to acquit you or they're going to condemn you. And so because, come on now, we, we got to get more. We That's why we got to understand the nature of God. That's why we got to understand the character of God. So many of us have been foolish. We didn't understand. Somebody taught us this or we thought it was no big deal or we thought it was religious. And no, this is a real God we serve. Like, but this is a real God we serve. And so whether it is to God or to your friend whether whether it is to God thank you for the jest whether it is to God or to your friend vows are nothing to play with 
whether it's to it doesn't matter if it's to God or to your friend, if you swore an allegiance, if you swore something to your friends, if you decided you I'm going to be there for you, I'm going to follow you to the day you are. That's why I'm very careful about where I put my words. I did not used to be. I did not, I did not, I did not used to be. I used to think I don't, I don't make them in. I don't even like to tell you I'm going to call you back. <laughs> I don't, I don't. I just say, I'll catch you later. I don't like to tell you I'm going to call you back because if I get busy, I might not be able to call you back. I might not. I, right now I'm homeschooling. I run a business. I, mean, I might not be able to call you back. I don't like to tell you I'm going to see. I don't like to. Because I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep that vow. So breaking a vow is indeed sinful. So don't do it. Right? I'm just telling you. Breaking a vow is sinful. It's not a, if it's, it's not if it's a sin. It's a sin. Breaking a vow is sinful. And so when we make a vow, God, I'm going to submit my life to you. I'm going to serve you. Nothing will come before you. It's simple, right? You caught up in sin. You made, you made it. Any, yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I'm so glad for brand new mercies and graces daily. Yes. And so we're gonna talk about repentance, right? But we are not. I promise. I'm with you. I'm down for you. I'm down for you, like four five times. <laughs> I'm down for you. I ain't never gonna back off. Stuff we say to our friends when we make vows in marriages. I'm gonna love you till death do us part. Right? I, I'm going to love you till death do I part. I swear to be there for you. Right? Just all of these foolish things. I've had to go back and repent for some commitments I've made in relationships because I never sought God and even asked him whether or not I was supposed to be tied to the relationship. And God said, you swore some things by some things that you didn't even have the right and authority. And it cost me. It cost me later. Like it cost me. I had to walk through some tribulation at some times by swearing allegiance to some people. I ain't had no business swearing allegiance to. And God was like, I ain't never told you to swear allegiance to people. I've never told you to swear allegiance to people. I've never told you to do that. I told you, you I'm, the, I'm it. Right? Because seasons change. I may not want that person in your life. That person may cannot go with you on this leg of the journey. So we have to be careful with that. Like we have to, I've learned so many lessons lately. So God, let our awesome God work out your life and you continue to do his will. Just let him work it out and you walk step by step. So we're not going to make no if then. God, if you give me this, uh, mm -mm. and if we made if then statements, we're going to repent. We're going to repent. So let me give you a few scriptures. Let me tell you a little bit about Japheth. I hope I'm saying his name right and what happened with him in the Bible. And then I'm going to give you some scriptures to chew on to help you with this. So J-E-P-H-T-H-A-R, -E Japheth. I think that's what he said. I went and looked up the sound. So it's over in Judges. It's Judges 11, 29, and 40. So he is, um, he's leading the Israelites in battle against the Ammonites and he's a mighty man of valor, but he made a rash vow to give the Lord so he could win this war. So this is what he says. He comes and he says, Lord, <laughs> if you will let me win this war, the very first person that comes out of the doors to meet me when I return home as the victor, I'm going to give them to you. Well, the very first person that came out the door was his daughter. And so then he had to offer her up to the Lord. Now, what's not clear is we don't know that he sacrificed her. He may have gave her over to the temple to the priest, but he had to honor the vow because he didn't even think of the vow. He could have just said, Lord, let your will be done in this battle. Help me to fight this battle. But he offered his vow was the very first person that walks out the door. I'm going to offer them up as a sacrifice for you. And so the very first person that walked out the door was his daughter. That's why we have to be so careful in our words. And so he made a foolish, a rash vow that just didn't add up, that just didn't make sense, right? When Hannah said, when Hannah was pleading, she was like, I'll give him up to you. You've got to make sure that whatever you come out your mouth or it's a sin or God is going to judge it, right? God may, and it says here, he might actually wipe out everything you've achieved. So we got to look at that. What, what things am I saying before God? And does this make sense? Or Lord, just let your will be done in my life. I'm not going to make no promises to you. And I'm not going to make, and if you've broken promises to God, to people, or even to yourself, right? Or to people or to yourself, if you've broken promises to yourself, then, then you got to get yourself in a position so you can repent, so you can heal. So numbers 30, um, 
one through seven, Moses spoke with the leaders of Israelites and he told them this command from the Lord. He says, if a man makes a promise to the Lord or says he will do something, he must keep his promise. He must do what he said. If a young woman still living at home makes a promise to the Lord or pledges to do something special. And if her father hears about the promises or pledge and says nothing, she must go do what she promised, right? And so if we make a pledge to the Lord, we're supposed to do it. Deuteronomy 23, 21 through 23. When you make a vow to the Lord, your God, you must not delay in fulfilling it for otherwise he will surely hold you accountable as a sinner. If you refrain from making a vow, it will not be sinful. So just don't make vows. Don't make oaths. Don't swear. Like don't swear anything, right? If you refrain from making a vow, it will not be for sinful. Whatever you vow, you must be careful to do what you have promised. So whatever you vow before the Lord is actually like a free will offering to the Lord. So if you vow it, you've got to complete it. Like if you vow it, you've got to complete it. James 5, 11 and 12 says, think of how we regard as blessed those who have endured. You have heard of Job's endurance, right? And it says, and above all my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be your yes and your no be your no so that you may not fall into judgment. People will say, well, that because Deuteronomy is Old Testament. Well, I'm giving it to you in your New Testament. Don't swear by nothing. Don't, don't swear. Don't, don't swear. Wear it by nothing. Watch what comes out your mouth. Proverbs 20 and 25. It is a snare. For a person to rashly cry holy and only afterward to consider what he has vowed. It's a snare. It's a trap by the enemy. Proverbs 10, 19, 20. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut right? The words of the godly are like sterling silver. The heart of a fool is worthless. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by their lack of common sense. Psalms 41 and 12, 41 and 12, because of my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever right? You uphold me. Proverbs 11 and 3, honesty guides good people. Dishonesty destroys treacherous people. So you cannot try to pull a fast one on God, right? Malachi 1 and 14 said, cursed is the cheat who promised to give a fine ram from his flock, but then sacrifices a defective one to the Lord. So cursed is the person that promises you're going to do this offering to God, or I'm going to tithe, or God, I promise you're going to get this much. And then you give him partial of what you told him you were going to give him. You give him part the tithe. You give him part the money. You give it, come on now. You got to give him part. Cursed is he. Galatians 6 and 7, 8. Do not deceive yourselves because God is not mocked, right? Here's some reminders, Matthew 5, 34 and 37. But I say to you, do not take oaths at all, not by heaven, because it is the throne of God, not by earth, because it is his footstool and not by Jerusalem, because it is the city of the great king. Do not take an oath by your head because you are not able to make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. More than this is from the evil one, right? Don't swear what you're going to do tomorrow. James 4, 13 and 14, right? How do you know what your life is going to be like tomorrow? Your life is like morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. Don't swear on your mark. So here's the thing we're going to do. If we've been making vows and we haven't been honoring our vows, or we've been making promises and we haven't honored our promises, then we're going to repent and we're going to ask forgiveness right? You're gonna, we're going to repent and we're going to ask forgiveness. It says 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalms 32, then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave my guilt. And then what we're going to do ourselves is we're going to reroute our foundation in how we are building our relationship with God and how we're building our relationship with others. If you tell somebody you're going to do something, you didn't do it. You need to go ask for their forgiveness. If you haven't been standing about your promises and your commitment to people, you need to go ask for your forgiveness. I'm sorry. I have not been honoring my commitment to you. 
Like I have it, things have taken off or things have happened in my life and I need to repent and I need to apologize for not honoring for what I said I was going to be or not being able to be the friend. I'm sorry in this season, I just can't. I had to do this with a friend. I had to text a friend and say, I'm sorry, I just can't be what I need to be to you in this season because of where my life is right now, right? And then a true friend is going to cover you in love like a brother or a sister, right? But you got to be honest with where you're at or if you can commit, keep the commitments and you're you're, you've been failing in commitment or you've been failing in relationships, tell the person, I'm sorry, I've been failing in this relationship, but I need to, I need God to help me because I know it's important, right? It's important in my relationship to him. I know I'm supposed to honor this. I know I'm supposed, can I tell you something? I took myself because of the way the season I was on boards, I was sitting on committees and I could not keep up with what I was doing with the demand and the pull that God was um, pulling me in, right? Like pulling me in, I, I had to. And so I had to write the boards and say, I can't be on boards right now. Cause my commitment is to my family. Like my commitment is to my family. My commitment is to this ministry. And the Lord told me to make these a priorities. So I had to resign from boards and say, I can't sit on these boards right now. I can't be involved in anything else because I have to be committed to this right now. This is what God is calling me to. That's why you got to have an ear to the Lord. I had to sit there. I had to say that I had to make that decision, right? I had to make that decision. I can't, this is all that I can be committed to right now. This is all that I can do right now. And, and it was real and it was hard, even in some relationships. These are, this is where I have to go right now in my relationships. This is what I'm allowed to do right now. I'm not allowed to do much else. And I had to eat that because I hadn't realized I had been not operating in truth. I had been, and not intentionally trying to operate in truth. That hasn't been my intention, but it was making too many commitments to things that we didn't even really ask God if we should be involved and committed in it. We ain't seek the face of God to it. We ain't seek, we ain't seek, we, we're not building the foundation on that which will last, right? We're not, so we, so we got to go back and we got to repent to God. If you swore to God, you were going to do something, ask the Holy Spirit to search your heart and go on and say, Lord, forgive me. And not, can I tell you something? And not being indiligent in what he called, called you to. Like not just ask him to help you with that, help you with what, what has been taking his place and what you vow and committed, right? We vow and committed to him that we vow and I honor you and I honor what you told me to do. So I want to leave you with Matthew 7, 24 and 27, and then let's take our Psalms 91 and I'm going to extend what they say, the right hand of So Matthew 7, 24 and 27, it says, therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and it was great the fall of it. The, 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 I love, first of all, the enemy looks for, um, gaps. The enemy looks for whatever you have before God. You need to understand that whatever you made before God, whether it's work, whether it's your relationship, whatever you've put before God, the enemy looks for that gap. So when the storm does come and a storm is going to come, right? That is going to be the test, whether you're going to honor your word to God, whether you're going to honor your vow, whether you're going to honor your commitment, or you're going to be faithful to what you call. It's always going to happen uh, through a storm. The test is going to happen to see whether or not you're going to be faithful to what you've been called to do. The test is going to happen to see whether or not you're going to be diligent, whether you're going to get weary and well doing, whether or not whatever you swore by, whatever commitment you made, I'm going to pray. The test is going to come. Some of us are working at home, by, at home now. The test is going to come and to see if you're going to get out of bed and you're going to spend, spend God. Yep, the enemy is looking for weak sides and the pressure is going to come and the pressure is going to be applied. And God is also going to see, God knows what's in your heart, but you're going to see if you're really committed. You're going to see if you're really made of. You're really, oh, if God, I live and for God, I die. I'm all of it's going to come out in a crisis. All of it, all of what you really believe is going to come out in a crisis. So if I'm living on this principles and I'm strengthened in the truth, which is the word of God, then when the crisis come in, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. When the crisis comes in, I shall not be moved. The test of your character is going to come in your storm.
The test of your character is going to come in your storm. The test in your character is going to come when, God, when the enemy offers you something that's not God's best for you. In a relationship... When the enemy, God is saying to you, this is the person that I've, I've you're either married or you're, this is the person I'm calling you to. The enemy's going to come when the test is going to come when he offers you second best. I'm just telling you, all these tests are going to happen. The things are going to come to see whether or not you'll choose God's very best for you. Whether you'll do God's very best. But, but when you build relationships on the foundation of Jesus Christ, when you build your purpose on the foundation of Jesus Christ, when you build work on the foundation of Jesus Christ, then you're going to stand the test. You're going to stand the test. And the test and the strength is going to come in the word of God. Like, you're going to stand the test and the test is going to, you got to build your foundation on God. That's why nothing can be built on anything else. Because anything else is going to fail. And it's going to come out during the storm and it's going to come out to test what's really inside of you. So Matthew 7, 24 and 7, Jesus says, if you take my words, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. If you'll take my words, if you'll take my yoke, if you'll be yoked up with me, if you'll make me your foundation, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. But if you get yoked to something else or somebody else, that yoke ain't going to be easy and that burden ain't going to be light. It's not. It comes with a penalty. It comes with a price. I'm going to say this for the last time. My aunt said this to me, and it's just been one of my life mantras. Anything that you put before God is going to hurt you. It's going to destroy you, your kids, your job, your career, your whatever. It is going to destroy you. So let's take our Psalms 91 and insert our names in there. Javen, Jaleel, Jermaine, Josiah, Judah, Lyric, Logan, Shiloh, Zayden, Casey, Derek, and Janie, Alana, Ashley, Rick, um, DeQuindre, Dwayne, Belisa, Cecily, Marquise, Vivica, uh, April, and Adria, LMJ Ministries staff, LMJ Ministries prayer team, Lord God, LMJ Ministries partner, the city of Little Rock, Frank Scott, the state of Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson, the United States of America, President Donald Trump, the cabinet, the Senate, Lord God, North American continent, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shelter, my apartment complex in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I trust him for he will rescue from every trap and and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terror at night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side, though 10,000 are dying around you, these evils will not touch you. Just open your eyes and see how the wicked are punished. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the most high your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. You will crush fierce lions and serpents under your feet. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with long life and I will give them my salvation. And it's so important for those of you that are not saved. If you are watching and you have not made Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you're not sure if you made Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, in order to be under his protection, I'm just going to be honest. And he does reign on the just and the unjust, but to be sure that you're in, under his protection, to be sure that you don't make useless, useless vows that you can be um, repent against, to make sure that you're 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 sure you need to make a decision to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. All you got to do is confess. I did it. I was there. I was useless. I was full of junk. I was on a road in a pit and a path to hell. I'm just going to be honest. I was living outside of what God's very best for me. And so all I had to do, I said, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. And that I believe you died on the cross to forgive me for my sins. And I'm confessing you to be Lord and Savior in my life. And after I did that, the Holy Spirit came on in. And I want to extend. I want you to make that decision today. Don't wait. You might not have tomorrow. Don't wait so that I, God can honor you. And you can be honored by God. And then my last, my last thing to you is, will you consider becoming a partner with this ministry? Um, this ministry is a 501c3 ministry. We are out fulfilling the mandate and the call on our life to reach the one, <laughs> to reach the one, to get the gospel throughout the world, to serve those that are poor, to serve the widows, to serve single moms. That's what we do with this ministry. And we can't do this without your partnership. So would you consider becoming a monthly partner? 
No amount is too small. And it helps us just to reach our goals. And it helps us to continue to push the gospel. And it helps us to feed the homeless and feed the poor and take care of our mamas and all of those that have needs. If you'll do that, I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, God will liberally bless you. I promise. I'm not making a promise. Like I'm telling you according to what the word says. He said, given it shall be given unto you. Press down, shake together, run it over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Like that's the promise in the word. He said he's going to supply all you. Whatever a man sow, he will reap. So will you consider becoming a partner for, with us? Will you do that? I love y'all so much, but more than anything, God loves you. See you back here in the morning. Do me a favor. Go be loved today. My God, I just thank you. God supplies all your needs according to his riches and glory. That's my declaration that he supply all your needs, not some, all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, in Jesus name. Amen. Peace.